Ready? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to episode 9 of the Orange Peripheral. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, I think the last one we did was the uh, the last year recap. Maybe we could make this a monthly thing if you really wanted to. It's just whenever we had a chance. Well, you know, we've been busy. We've had the convention, and then I've gotten sick, and then we just had so much crap to do, you know. Stuff's come up, man. You know? It's like real life or something. Sheesh. Well, you seem to have a whole lot of topics on hand, so I'm going to let you take the wheel for a while. Yep, there's just a few bite-sized topics that I would like to touch on, and they have to do with things that happen recently. And they all kind of intermingle with each other, and hopefully mm-hmm. this will this will make a conversation that doesn't, that just won't quit. So let me start out with the hype train. The hype train. The hype train goes all the time. Woo, woo, can't stop it. But what happens when there's too much hype on something and it turns out to be a colossal failure? Well, it it just goes to show you, you can't put a whole lot of faith into games nowadays. That's because, the... Yeah. Because, you know, they're going to promise you the earth and the world and everything underneath it, and it can only deliver so much. There were two things that went into this thought process when I wrote this down. The first thing is, did you see that Peter Molyneux interview? Molyneux, I don't know why he's even such... I don't don't know know why he's so big anymore. Because this has happened every single time. He always promises the world and everything underneath it and and all that shit, and never, ever delivers 100%, and he has to backpedal and say, Oh, well, you know, we just had to do this, you know. I'm tired of it, okay? I'm tired of it. I think everybody else is, too. They are. In fact, they are so tired of it that Molyneux himself said, maybe gamers just should just stop listening to me. Or maybe you should just stop talking. Because now, not only are you wasting, you know, the money of your publishers, because, you know, now that you got your own company and you use it through uh, Kickstarter, you're wasting everybody else's money. The people who believed in you that you would actually deliver this time. You know, he's, I know that he's, he's been like this all these years, but I think he's good for it. I think it's going to turn around this time, guys. And look what happened. He didn't. It's the same old stuff. That was one of the sad parts, because he has good ideas. He just doesn't know how to implement them, thus creating the, the fact that you can't trust him. Exactly. I mean, sure, a lot of developers have... Uh, back down on a few things because of their ambitions, but nobody does it with such clockwork and with such reliability than Molyneux. Yeah, the best example is the original Fable. Probably one of my favorite games when it comes to, like, fantasy RPGs. It's not Mm -hmm. the biggest thing in the world, but that's how, that's why I like it. It isn't grandiose, it's just a simple fantasy thing. It's like something you'd read out of a fantasy novel. And I'm impressed, though, that it does go beyond, you know, through years and years of time and your character does age. I think that's kind of cool. Right, but another thing he promised, along with the moon and the stars and all the heavens, was uh, naturally growing foliage, which didn't happen. Um, nope. The uh, the ability to change your character, because uh, do you know what happens in Fable when you uh, when you basically pick an alignment? I only played the second Fable. And I played, like, a little bit of the first one, but not enough to really get into the story. Essentially what happens in the first fable is, depending on what you do, like like your upgrades, or if you do good deeds, bad deeds, uh, your character's physical appearance will change. Like, I, I always decide to be a spellcaster in RPGs like that, so I chose a bunch of magic stuff, and my hero all of a sudden started to have this, like, heavenly blue glow that will never go away. And that's something I wish you could get rid of, because I just wanted to be a normal guy, but, you know, if you looked at me the wrong way, you'd, you'd have, like, a fire spike up your ass or something like that. Just just something to have secret, not, you know, displaying to the world that, hey, I'm a spellcaster and I know high-level magic, don't mess with me. That just seems like uh, poor art design, you know? Something like that. But another cool thing was your alignment. Like, if you did enough good deeds, you'd end up having a halo over your head. If you did enough bad deeds, you'd grow devil horns. You know, stuff like that. And those could be adjusted. 
That's 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 that, that's second grade. That's like second grade stuff. He's good, so he's got a halo, and he's bad. He's got horns. It's just, it seems very juvenile and very simplistic and basic. But well, that's what I wanted. I just wanted something simplistic like that, and I got it. But there's actually a way to change that. You know, I was completely evil. I was murdering towns and immediately grew devil horns. But I went, I went to the church and gave them like a half a million gold, and all of a sudden I had a halo again. So apparently, you can buy oh, good deeds. <laughs> That's so awful. Oh, yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. But another part of the hype train... Another part of the hype train yeah. is actually games that look awesome. They are presented really well, and then they turn out to be a huge disappointment when they're finally released. Case in point, The Order 1886. Well, the thing about me is that when I first saw The Order 80, 1886... I gave absolutely no fucks. No fucks. Didn't care. Seemed like another generic shooter that looked boring and soulless and repetitive. And imagine my surprise when it turns out to be just that. We have much different mindsets because the setting, they were mixing an old style setting with futuristic weaponry. So, And you're also fighting fantasy monsters like werewolves and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Could have been done well. And I will give the game this. <laughs> it will. It looks gorgeous. This is probably the best looking console game we will ever, ever get. But as we see, it's a matter of style over substance. They put all the power into their graphics and they ended up having the gameplay suffer as a result, which I knew for years was going to be the trade off. We're going to have shiny looking, nice, pretty graphics. But they're all going to play like crap, and we're going to be bored out of our skulls, and the gaming market's going to crash again. They literally made it, it's like a five to seven hour game, mostly quick time events and cutscenes. People are comparing it to Rise, Son of Rome for the Xbox One. Ouch. That's a, that's a bad mm-hmm. comparison. A lot of prettiness, not a lot of gameplay. And that's what I hate about the games industry today. They think they have to have the most, most cutting-edge graphics. But I played VVV, VVV the, the other day, and I had more fun than I did with AAA titles. So, again, it doesn't have to be the graphics. It has to be the fun. I spent about, uh, I'd say, 20 minutes playing Lords of the Fallen yesterday. But you know what I just finished playing three hours of? Mm. Super Mario RPG. <laughs> again... Because it doesn't the, have to the have gameplay is so much edge. better. Yeah, I'll get to I'll get to Lords of the Fallen later when we do our uh, what what do you play and recap. But uh, I'm just throwing that as an example of any kind of modern console game I'm playing. Yeah, that is Lords a good of Fallen though is a lot better than a lot of other games out there though. But again, I'll get to that. Yeah, and now along with the hype train, something else that comes from the hype train is actually ports. Ports can be seen, like HD remakes or something like that. Like, a uh, best example recently is um, Grim Fandango, Resident Evil Remake Remaster, which still has the longest title in existence. But basically, they're taking the old games that people haven't played, shining them up, throwing them out to the public again, and some of them have been really good ideas because they update them. Some of them are just straight ports. And I have the a really good example of a bad port. <laughs> It's the difference between the Resident Evil port for the GameCube and the Resident Evil 2 port for the GameCube. Yeah. Yeah. One's, yeah, but... one's remastered, one's just a straight-up port, nothing changed. Lazy. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 for the GameCube, while they did put both discs worth into the GameCube disc, like, the the old version had a uh, disc for Leon, disc for Claire, and you had to have both discs to get the full experience. Now, they put it all on one disc. Very good choice. But basically what Resident Evil Remake did is they took the old game, got rid of the acting, got rid of the old graphics, redid everything, made it fun, made it look amazing, and even today got, with the remaster... Got better actors. Uh, yeah. They, again, they made it playable. But basically <laughs> they made a beautiful game look better with the remastered. I didn't know how they could do it, but... Even in this day and age, a GameCube game looks better than most AAA titles. So you're saying the remaster doesn't look as good as the GameCube version? Well, I mean, they touched up the GameCube version, but I'm saying if they can just take something from years ago and put an HD shine on it and it still looks better, 
than AAA games, you had something special there. Well, the thing is, AAA developers need to focus on the game development, not just the shiny graphics. Because if that's the case, go make a fucking CGI movie. Yeah. And that's that's, that's what they want to that's what they want to do now. They want to make CGI movies interactive and synonymous with video games. And it's not gonna work. It's not gonna translate to sales. It's not gonna be remembered. I mean, people remember games like Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. They don't remember games like Fuse or whatever. Because I've already right. forgotten the name of the game. Because it's so right. fucking forgetful. Yeah. Well, Fuse was just a generic f- first-person shooter. I think. Generic. Generic. It was going to have a whole bunch of personality and shit like that. But, nope. Yeah, you know, you got to get rid of the personality. I-, I now know what game you're talking about. I thought you were talking about a completely different one. But one that looked good on the outside... And then they changed it and made it boring. Mm-hmm. Overdrive looked fun, and then they made Fuse, and now it's just boring. It's another soulless piece of crap to add to the pile of soulless pieces of crap that have been churned out lately. And oh. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that the number of developers that uh, make really, really engaging, fun games is getting smaller and smaller. Really worrying. It's really unfortunate, but there are so many games out right now that if you don't make something that goes along with the tides, you're going to get forgotten. Like, just originality make, has no place. Fun. Just make but something ori- fun. Originality has no place anymore, because you're not going to get bought if you're... Like, if you come up with an original idea, nobody is going to take that chance with something that they know they're going to have fun with. Sunset Overdrive. Dark Souls. Uh, can I start any other IPs that we've had recently? The Order, 1886. <laughs> well, well, okay. Find any originality in there. Well, I can't. There's no, original, there's no originality in there. So really, the only way you're going to sell is if you are original. Because if you just make something that's like every, every other piece of crap that comes out there, no one's going to buy it. Well, th- Have think something of it, original, at least. No, th- think, of, think of it this way. Call of Duty sells millions upon billions of copies every year. Why? Because it's a safe bet. It's a name brand. It's also... It's like, it's like the Coca-Cola... Okay. It's like the Mountain Dew of the gaming world. Mountain Dew and Doritos go perfect with Call of Duty. Exactly, because they always have the XP stuff. It is the staple of modern culture. It's kind of like, you know, the NFL of gaming, pretty much. It's, it's the big, loud, uh, mainstream gaming that people get into. Take Call of Duty and put it on its pedestal. I want you to actually do this above your microphone. Put it on the top pedestal. Okay, hold on. Be right back. Let me just go get my copy of Black Ops. No, just get get your ass back over here. I didn't mean actually go get your copy. Use a fake one. Yeah. Say what? Use one made of air. All right, so pretend it's on its top pedestal. No it's other right, developer right, right, right my can touch Call of Duty as far as a shooter game is concerned. So the only way it's you like, are good... So it's like World of Warcraft, right? No one can touch that in terms of MMORPG, but they still try, right? Right. So, the people who try, and they try, they, they really do, they put their heart and soul into their game, the only reason they get noticed is because people compare it to Call of Duty. They compare it to the high life, to the top spot. That's the only way their shooter is going to get noticed, even with originality or something else like that. The only reason people are going to notice is because, oh, is it like Call of Duty? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, I'll buy it. Okay, well, let's also consider this. There's other games out there besides shooters. There's role-playing games, there's fighting games, there's strategy games, there's simulation games, there's racing games. None of them have to do with Call of Duty, so does that mean that the only thing you're going to make now is shooters? Well, we tried that. You go to Rage 86. How did that do? Not very fucking well. But there's always going to be something to compare it to. Like, uh, w- when I worked at GameStop, there was always, you know, people were... Th- big action games, like Darksiders. Darksiders was another good example that was that came around the time of the God of War HD collection or whatever, God of War 4. And people were saying, oh, what is Darksiders like? Oh, it's like Mixture of Legend of Zelda and God of War. There's always something to compare it to because they did so well and became a trendsetter. So you can compare it, but that doesn't mean that you can just derive off of that because you can still have a completely original thing out there and people will still buy it because it's something completely original like do, 
you personally, would you buy a game if nobody could compare it to anybody or anything else? Absolutely, which means it had that means it had to be a game to be experienced to be realized because there would be absolutely nothing like it. Yeah, like if if there was ever a game, there probably is. I just can't think of anything that I was like, "Tell me about this game," and they're like, "It's like, I don't know." Oh, really? Well, okay. Well, it's like Dark Souls. I again to oh, bring Jesus that up. Oh, I know, god. I know. Oh my god! Not everything is it's Dark a- Souls. <laughs> It's just an experience that you get when you play Dark Souls. I mean, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's fucking brutal. But it's just the 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 feeling you get from overcoming it and just how deep and how rich the world is. And I don't think I've ever played a game quite like it before. And I don't think I will. Like, even if I play Dark Souls 2, I don't think it's going to be quite the same. Woo woo, Bloodborne's on the way. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Oh, that looks awesome. It's like Dark Souls, but... No, I'm kidding. There's guns now. <laughs> there's guns and there's really like horrible, horrible looking monsters like zombies and all those disgusting things of the night. And it looks awesome. Looks like fun. Yeah. And that's uh, that's one thing. Woo that... poop, all aboard the hype train. Oh, yeah. Everybody get on that hype train. Woo woo. All you got to yeah. say is from the creators of Dark Souls and I am on board. From software. Okay. You got me. I've always loved From Software. Now, going from good games. ports, let's talk about next gen and how it's still not perfect. It's not perfect. I mean yeah. you've you've had your Xbox One for a while, I've had my <laughs> PS4 for a while. Oh my god. Don't you just love all those little tiny glitches that appear every now and again? Oh, I've I've got a yes. story for you. <laughs> sometimes a character's arm just doesn't go right, or sometimes something doesn't load very well. But me, I love seeing shit like that. I love uh, seeing all the little tears in the seams to let us know that it's not perfect yet, and that'll just that'll keep you really, really grounded at where next gen stands. You're gonna get a lot of great cinematic experiences. You're probably gonna get a lot of great gameplay experiences. You're probably gonna get a lot of pretty graphic experiences, but it's never gonna be a hundred percent real. And I think you need to realize that. Yeah, a lot of people want you, to be you as an audience. I mean, yeah. like brought into the game in order to escape their reality. But the the fact is, as soon as you see somebody's head like turn completely around as they're talking during a cutscene, you know something's up. And that's probably the best thing for people who can't escape their fantasies. It's a it's the best thing to let you know that reality is still real. But the problem is, it breaks it breaks the immersion a little bit. Which yeah, is not a great. little bit. It, it, I think it all depends on the game when it comes to immersion. Mm-hmm. But, uh, can I tell you my experience with a recent Xbox One game I bought? I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Go for it. <laughs> uh, you may have heard me uh, complaining about this on Twitter recently, but uh, a port that recently came out in updated port was uh, Dead or Alive 5 Last Round. You were telling me about this in one of the Star Fox adventures we did, I think. Uh, yeah. And this is why I say Next Gen is nowhere close to being perfect. Because there are a lot of problems with Dead or Alive 5 last round. <laughs> um, I, I was going to kind of piece this together with the order. Seeing, seeing as how, like, it's not all perfect in Next Gen because you got a 5-7 to seven hour game and... It's basically watching a elongated movie. But Dead or Alive 5, last round, it has everything from the first two versions. So if you're going for one, you play it on this one. Finally, I have a fighting game to play on my Xbox One. I've been waiting on that. And it's a broken mess. It is so broken that I tried out. They, they added a new character. I was like, okay, I'll try her out first. Let's go ahead and play as her. Let's go to a random stage. Let's go. I got through one round, and then my Xbox One froze and started going... Oh, no! It locked up. Oh, that's not good. It locked up and committed suicide. My Xbox One was done. It almost spit the disc out at me. But it it stopped. It went back... Xbox, don't do it. You have so much to live for. We all love you. It went back to the home menu, and I was like, okay... Well, that didn't work. 
let's try it again. Maybe maybe that was a fluke. Okay, so every once in a while, sometimes a game will crash and it'll go straight back to the home menu. That's its fail safe for uh, for the Xbox One. So I was like, okay, maybe it was something that was off. Let's try it again. Go in, select a different character, select the uh, the Tengu lady. I don't know why a Tengu doesn't have a long nose and she's really sexy looking and has big wings, but whatever. The lady? It's, it's, it's dead or alive. It's weird. But anyway, I go into a new stage and I play through a match and I start seeing lag. And lag in a fighting game is awful. So I'm oh, yeah. like jilting around the arena and all of a sudden it just backs me out to the home menu and stops. I was like, well, shit. All right, maybe it's the level. Uh, my brother-in-law and I were trying to were trying to troubleshoot Dead or Alive Five last round as I was playing it. So I was like, okay, let's try this. This is this is, this is offline, right? Yeah, this is offline. I'm not even online. Huh. I was, and let me let me back up a bit because as soon as I put in the disc, you know everything has to pre-install nowadays, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But uh, Dead or Alive Five had to pre-install forty items. 40 items? It had to install the game, the ability to use the characters in the game, and every single character. It had to download the data and install the data for every single character. I should pick up the PS4. Ver- is there a PS4 version? Yes, there is. I and- gotta pick that up because I want to challenge uh, pre-installing because uh, usually for me to pre-install a game you know, from a disc, it only takes about like 15-20 minutes at the most. Half an hour if there's a sizable update to go with it actually you're you're good for picking up the ps4 version because your version works L- let me go ahead and uh, continue what? so uh, you'll see you'll see uh, so my brother-in-law and i were trying to troubleshoot this and maybe it was the level maybe going to the forest level it was too much for the xbox to handle let's try a different stage so select my character select my costume go straight into this brand new stage it was like a halloween stage there was tons of stuff going on in the background i was like this has to crash there is no way this game can handle this much going on in the background. And I got through an entire two-round match. I was like, well, it had to have been the level then. It must have been. some Probably something going on in the background that just didn't fucking agree with the console. All right, so new Damn characters. Damn, monkey! You're not yeah. supposed to be on that branch! We get new characters, get everything going, and we go back to that one stage where everything kept crashing. I punched once, and it went... Ugh! <laughs> and then died again. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll just avoid that stage then. All right, so let's go ahead and, sh- and try it. one. La- this is the final straw. This is one last time. I'm going to get my characters. I'm going to go into uh, a new stage, one of the new stages. They had Zack Island from the Extreme Beach Volleyball games. It's, yeah, whatever. So go in there. And as I'm selecting the stage... The game blacks out and throws me back to the home menu and crashes again. I was like, okay, I'm done. Let's do some research. Apparently, the the 360 version, the PS3 version, and the PS4 version of this game work fine because of a day one patch. (laughs) The Xbox One version doesn't work because Microsoft won't give the okay for the patch. (laughs) <laughs> Team Ninja desperately they they sent email upon email to Microsoft saying please let us post this patch to fix our broken ass port and Microsoft oh, hasn't gotten back to them oh my god that's awful last round more like last straw uh huh so there's my uh there's my broken game story Next gen's not perfect. Why the fuck would you do that? Buy an Xbox One, I mean. Why would you do that? Hey, it had games on it I wanted to play. And that's the only game, by the way. Every other one I've tried, no problems whatsoever. Nothing has so ever crashed f- so, on me. So what? Yeah, wait, wait. Why single out Dead or Alive 5 last round for the Xbox One as the one game? Oh, that, that game is unpatchable. Oh, no way. I don't why, know. Why that version? What the fuck? I don't know. It's messed I, up. I went to message board upon message board, and I was like, what the fuck is going on with my game? And everybody was saying, yeah, day one crash. Even the downloadable game version also crashes. Where all the data is there. You have no excuse for a downloadable version of a game to crash that much. I can understand a disc. The disc is scratched. It can crash all at once. When you have all the data, 
all like 40, 38 to 40 gigs of data right there, it shouldn't crash. But it does. So who do you blame more in this? Do you blame Microsoft for arbitrarily not letting you patch your, your broken-ass game? Or is it the, the, the developer's fault, it's the Team Ninja's fault, for making your game in such an unplayable state in the first place? I think it's a little bit of both, because this is a patch that they... Because there was a day one patch that was supposed to go out. They knew there was a problem, so it's half their fault because they knew there was a problem that needed fixed on day one. But it's also Microsoft kind of crossing their arms and going, uh uh-uh. Not doing it. You ask us for but too much. But the 360 version works fine. I mean, what's the, what's the? What's I don't the know. Thing about... <laughs> That's what it, kills me. It makes more me. sense if the 360 version didn't work, but the Xbox One version worked fine. But why not the 360 version? That makes no sense. Maybe I, I I have a theory. It's a really dumb theory, but it's a theory. The only reason they're not doing it is because Dead or Alive Five Last Round has over 600 goddamn costumes to buy. Uh, that game alone is single-handedly taking up half of Microsoft's bandwidth with all the costumes. Mm. And you know, they're all sexified. And I actually took a look at how much it would take to uh, buy every single costume. I did the math. How many hundreds? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars will it take? Consider this. You can buy certain costumes in a pack, or you can buy them sure. individually. Individually, I'm sure they're... There's, I'm sh- they are $2 oh, a pot. Ah! Fuck off. 99 so, cents would be good. It's a lot of money. Especially when, uh, you know, I, I, they show you some pictures, but, you know, if it's the ultimate sexy version, you're not allowed to see a picture. But I saw a picture of, their, uh, of the Christmas ones, and certain girls were only wearing ribbons. And that mm. was $2. You know, you can buy the whole set for, like, 12 Twelve dollars, you get you get all the girls wearing nothing but presents over their boobs, or you know, just wearing ribbons around the naughty bits. You know, that's the it's the only thing you have to deal with. Um, they have a pack Santa where you can buy, baby. you can buy every single costume for a hundred and ten dollars. hundred. What's with that number? One hundred and ten dollars, because one hundred and ten dollars was the exact same price for the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Day Zero Edition Pro Pro Elite Motherfucking Awesome Edition. One hundred and ten dollars for not all of the costumes. For not all of them. These are the costumes that came with the port. There's still about five hundred costumes you have to get. Oh. <gasps> Woo! Or you could just not fucking bother. Yeah. Well, to its credit, about 400 of them are in the game. So there's only 200 downloadable ones. Right now, I have Dead or Alive 5 for the PS3. I didn't get the plus version. And again, like last resort, I'm not going to fucking bother. It's Y'all got enough of my money. Fuck off. Actually, what's funny is I didn't know I was getting a GameStop bonus. So when I pre-ordered this game, apparently I was getting two costume packs. I got the Ninja huh. Pack and the Aloha Pack. The Ninja Pack is for all the Ninja characters. They get like this this uh, this really tight black suit. You know, it's got uh, some of them are robes, so like very sexy. Yeah, I kind of like that. They're all wearing black and they look really cool in them. The Aloha Pack is the worst. Because I think it's for Mila, Ayane, uh, Kasumi, and Hitomi. Uh, Kasumi's got a lovely sun hat, and I'm getting to the punchline. You know, she's got a, a lettuce uh, skirt, you know, a very, and that's very nice flowing skirt. And uh, th- all they're wearing are lays for their top. They're just wearing flower necklaces. Huh. Uh, it's... Uh, it's- I- Pleasing, pleasing to the eye, sure, but I wouldn't want to pay that much for it. I mean, seriously. Hey, if you want to buy Dead or Alive 5 last round, it's $40. And if you pre-order now at GameStop, you can get the Aloha pack where they're only wearing flowers over their boobs. Well then, move the fuck over, because I'm making <laughs> my way to the pre-order line. I'm there. <laughs> How much is the is the upgrade? Like, I just have Dead or Alive 5. How much do I have to pay to get upgraded? 
You mean like... 40 bucks still? Yeah, I think it would be $40. So I just gotta buy the game again, is that it? Pretty much, because as soon as the Fuck new... off! As soon as new versions come out, the value of the older versions go down. Shit, that should be like 20 bucks and get everything, because I already have the damn game for it. Yeah. Whatever. So, that's my, uh, that's my big crash story. I thought it, I, th- I think it's really funny now, and I'm just awaiting that one day where I'll be able to play my not broken game, but it's not coming anytime soon, so I'll just wait patiently. Or you can sell it and get the 360 version. Nah, <sighs> might as well. I've got the next gen, might as well play it on there. Might as well. I can wait. Do you have any, uh, funny next gen stories? Funny next-gen stories. You know, I've really been playing a lot of next-gen lately. I'm <gasps> just kind of focusing... I've been focusing on the PC and the Wii U for a bit. I mean, i played some games with the PS4. I've been enjoying a bunch of the PlayStation Plus bonuses, and February is a great month for the service, let me tell you what. That's what I saw. They're getting some pretty good ones. I don't have a Vita, so I didn't get the two Vita games. Well, I did <laughs> get one of them. Oh, I got a uh, Ro... I did pick up Rogue Legacy. I already had it for the PC, but it just runs better on my PS4, so... Nice, nice. So that's that's a lot of fun. Um, Yakuza 4, uh, that's one of the games I've been playing lately. I'll get to that. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Like, a lot. More than I should. But uh, one of the games I want to discuss is Apotheon. I think I'm saying yep. that right. Yeah, never heard of it. Apotheon. I'm all for the games that try brand new innovative art styles. My favorite Kirby game, Kirby's Dream Land 3, because it had, like, uh, scribble crayon uh, graphics. It looked amazing. It's wonderful. I love that game. Uh, one of my most anticipated games of the year is Cuphead. It's it's a game done entirely in the style of the 1930s Max Flesher cartoons. Oh, it looks I it. incredible. I am dropping my jaw at this shit. It's 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 amazing. And then I look at Apotheon, and it has the same sort of thing going for it. The entire game is done in, like, uh, Greek pottery art. It looks it looks pretty cool. It's too bad it's boring and lame as shit, though. I mean... Damn. <laughs> Another example of all style, no substance. One of the problems is that they should have told it as if it was a legend, because it's in that kind of old pottery art style. So oh, it could yeah. be told, but instead it's saying, the gods have abandoned you. So it's like, it's putting you in the game, and it's sort of terrible. It, it's just the way it's presented, I, I don't like. Uh, I'm just, I'm th- I'm not, you know, fighting as some here. I'm just some dude. You are some dude. It's, it's not very engaging. I gave it about a six. That's unfortunate. I wish they would have done more with the art style, and it, would, it should have married with the story a bit more, you know? Instead, it just it just feels lame. Yeah, I've I've had a couple of those where it looks promising, but it's just bleh, nothing. No, oh, and Transistor's kind of boring, but I'm giving it a chance. Isn't that the same guy who did Bastion? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bastion looked boring in the first place. Well, the problem is though, there's just one voice in those games. The sword. See, in Bastion, it's okay, because it's, uh, it's like th- the stranger. I saw that kid up there. He was doing stuff. Kid didn't look so good. It's kind of like, Sam- it's like, it's like Big Lebowski and Sam Elliott is narrating my life as a dude. You know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> but w- with, with Transistor, it actually is the sword, and the sword's in the story, and the sword still has the same kind of voice, and it doesn't match the story at all. <laughs> or rather... Rather, it does match the story. It just gets really fucking annoying because he only has one note. Hey, kid. We gotta get going. Looks like there's some dudes up there. We should probably take him out. Looks like a new power. Maybe you should go through that door, too. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe we shouldn't. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. We should hit on back, you know? it's, it's It's the same shit. There's no personality at all, and it just oh, feels kind of soulless as an experience. It's what it sounds like! If Batman was a sword! <laughs> I am the hero Gotham deserves. That's what it sounds like. (laughs) It's not even a sword. It's like a broken popsicle stick. I kind of want to play it now, too. (laughs) It's 
it's not bad, but I I should I should give it a more of a chance than I am. Uh, I have a strange feeling I wouldn't like it because I thought Bastion looked boring, and I was kind of right when I played it. I swear, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie you down. We're gonna play Journey one of these days. Oh, that looks boring Journey, as shit. Journey is a far better game than Bastion. <laughs> far shorter too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. No, you we're gonna I, do it together, and you're gonna love it. You, you know, I, I do this just to make you mad, right? Oh, I know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make you play a good game out of it. <laughs> Joke's on you, pal. Yeah, yeah, you can you can keep it. I'll You're gonna I'll make you you're gonna make me mad? It. Well that's great. I'm only trying to touch your heart. That's yeah. all. I'll I'll dive into it one of these days. It really is worth it. Once you get past the first puzzle and you start sloping down the hill, everything starts clicking. I've got another topic that ties into the latter end of next gen not being perfect but you have games that are that are announced to E3 and they look cool right you've got games Depends. that are announced um later on in the year and then they're soon after released so you got games that are announced and take some time you've got some that are announced ma- mainly Nintendo ones that are are announced and then they're released like two weeks later that look awesome and you're looking forward to them. So there's different so parts you, of the hype train. So fine, you've got three games. You've got the games that we've known about already and they're on the way, like soon. We've got games that uh, are almost finished, they'll be done by the end of the year. And then we got games that are going to be ready sometime next year. You know, that uh, TBA next year kind of bullshit then. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes you get announcements for things you weren't expecting, like a sequel or a, or a remake or something like that. You get something completely out of the blue that you had no idea that was going to happen or like nobody would even fathom it happening, and then they say, release this year. And it's just like, whoa, are you, are you kidding? You're, you're coming out with this already? Haven't had that happen in a while. Well, it recently happened for Vita owners, Vita and PS3 and PS4 owners. I uh, I follow NIS America. I see, I see what they have up their sleeve, and they had a live stream not too long ago. And you know they were talking to Skya, they were talking uh, Guide to Fate Paradox, and the, and they were talking. Hey, for the record, I hate NIS America. I think I they have single handedly killed JRPGs in this country. They have ruined them. Continue. No, that was a, that was a good tangent. <laughs> but basically, they had a couple announcements about their games that are coming out here soon, and then they basically the the main person picks picks up the microphone, drops it, and said, "Hey, guess what, guys? You know that spinoff to Danganronpa you wanted? It's coming out this year." And to announce it, let's have two of the main characters come in and announce, just announce the game. Oh, and here's a trailer, and here's a release window. That's really good on their part. They've got a, they have, they own this franchise over here in the States, and they are reveling in how good it's doing. Even if it's on the Vita, it's still doing phenomenally. And they know, they know how to upsell it. Something completely original, which can be compared to other things, but hey, you gotta be original something, you know, somehow, but... A game that has so much originality, and yet it's doing so very well here in the States. How very strange. It's like a foreign concept. It's like, it's like Japanese developers have these original ideas, but they never come over here because they don't think we'll like them. And yet, most of the time, they end up being incredible. That's why people oh. were begging so much for Yakuza 5, and Sony says, Well, seeing how you guys want it so bad, here you fucking go. Yakuza 5 coming later. Which is a really good move on their part. Like, even if they announced it, it still gave them... It gave them points in the books of all their players, basically what I'm saying. Give the people what they want, don't treat them with such contempt, and they, in turn, will start buying things from you. Capcom! (coughs) Yeah. Capcom, you are so bad at listening to... You used to be really good at listening to your buyers, and now you're just... You used to be one of my favorite developers of all time, and look (laughs) how far you've fallen. 
I'm just thinking, it's like how the mighty have fallen. They're, they're trying their best to be able to afford a junior cheeseburger at McDonald's. They're, they're doing so not well just because they won't, they're making things that people think they want that they'll buy, but it's not enough to like get them back on their feet. Well, I think part of the reason is that everybody who was big at that company is gone now. There's like yeah. only two, there's like only two people, two real developers who matter over there anymore. And that's Yoshinori Ono and Shu Takumi, and I f- and before anybody kills me, the guy who also does Monster Hunter. I, I, Monster I don't know Hunter's big. Monster Hunter is yeah. so big right now, I can't believe it. I think I should probably pick up Monster Hunter 4, because people are saying, yeah. wow, it's even... Because the only Monster Hunter game I've ever played was Monster Hunter uh, 2 Freedom for the PSP, which apparently was the wrong Monster Hunter to get. <laughs> But now Bad everyone's saying stuff. that Monster Hunter 4 is like the Monster Hunter 4, you know, the wonderful 3DS version that is so awesome and does everything better than the original and, you know, brings it forward to a new generation. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is apparently that game, so I think that's going to be my jumping point when I go into it. Oh, yeah. That that was going to be my point on Monster Hunter. It's like, if you're going to start anywhere, start there. Start with the best. It's like, okay. Yeah, like, like even people who've been playing Monster Hunters for years and be, like massive Monster Hunter nuts are saying that it's it's the Monster Hunter game. So, hey, I mean, I'm going for that then. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. Oh, n- nice. Thank thank you Monster Hunter players. I will play that one. The rabid fan base approves? What the <gasps> hell? What? Awesome. Good job, guys. Uh, you mind if I go into PSA mode? PSA mode? Uh, PSA okay, mode. Let me just uh, let me go ahead. Uh, let me go into my PSA mode then. <laughs> yeah, this actually has to do with uh, the announcement I just recently talked about. Uh, mm-hmm. Recently, it is now apparently a fad to send death threats to everybody. Uh, I'm. Bringing this to the point that some of some voice actors and actresses, which should never be in the crossfire, are getting death threats because of specific character roles. You don't do that. Ever. People are fucking delusional, man. Well, you, you brought it up once, the, uh, what was it, the uh, Penny Arcades theory. It works it's, perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's the greater internet fuckwad theory. Uh, yeah. The more the more anonymity that you have, and the bigger of an audience you have, the bigger of a cunt bag you're gonna be. Oh, sorry, that's fuck wad. I said that wrong. No, it, it still applies because some people who don't even keep up with the drama or the the stuff that shouldn't even be drama on the internet are being caught in this just for like a character role. It's like I don't agree with your casting. I want you dead. Really? There's, they're just saying... I'm, I'm sure that they, they don't mean it. Most of them probably don't mean it. They're just saying it because they're on the internet. No one's going to catch me. No one's going to care that I sent a death threat to somebody because they're never going to find me. tee hee 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 Because nobody's doing anything about it to punish them. Cause, well, the thing, yeah. thing is, the receivers of these threats are actually scared for their life. Exactly. Because it's not every day that you get sent a death threat. Like somebody saying, I'm going to kill you because I hate you. Oh, it's, it, it gets worse than that. They say the most terrible, horrible things. Like you're a whore. Your family doesn't love you. You're a failure. They, they hit them below the fucking belt, man. in these fucking death threats. Yeah. And then I started thinking, what kind of person receives these? And you know what? It was specifically what gender gets these. Because in the same day, two actresses that I follow got pretty much the exact same threats. And that got me to thinking, well, chances are it's part of that. The one organization that thinks they're doing God's will, but no, it's not. It, no. But another thing is, why haven't we gotten any yet? A, we're not that big. B, nobody cares about two fat, stupid nerds. We're also men. Yeah, and we can take care of ourselves because we're men. We're manly men. (coughs) Oh, I broke my finger. I honestly do think that's one of the factors that goes into harassment on the internet. One, depending on your gender. And two, how big you are. Because then, if you say something, you've automatically made it a problem. Because do you ever hear, like, Game Grumps talking about the shit they get? 
I'm sure they get a lot of shit, but I never heard him talk about it. That's right there. That right there. Because it is brought up, everybody knows about it. But I have a strange feeling that PewDiePie, Markiplier, Game Grumps, any of them with like millions upon millions of subscribers, they stopped reading their emails ages ago. They don't even know you exist when you're trying to threaten them. Therefore, they don't give a shit. They don't ever bring it up because they don't know it exists. Now, for people who are, you know, in a smaller audience, you know, some people who maybe don't have that many fans, they start getting a death threat. Of course they're going to bring it up. They'll be like, this isn't cool. What do I do? He's going to do the Hideki Kamiya thing. Block. I love the I love the Kamiya thing. Because <sighs> really, I, I, I really don't think people are literally going to try to kill you. These are just children st- or ch- child-minded adults who because life isn't going their way because one role happened a way that they, they didn't happen they think that because if, if they can type enough bad words to people they can make it all change and make it all go away they're children they're fecal-minded idiots and really we shouldn't give them any kind of any kind of uh, attention at all yeah, I just I just hate how bad it's gotten. We all used to love each other. I know what happened. I don't this know. This used to be such a simple thing, but now, but now because everybody's just getting all up in arms about every little fucking thing and I think people just take games way too fucking seriously. Was it you I told about the trap door? The tra- it's like Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just get a bunch of people on a trapdoor that are causing the problem. You just pull a lever and then they're all gone. I got a better oh, idea. Oh. Mm-hmm. You uh, take you take whoever actually purchases a copy of Hatred, log their IPs, find them, <laughs> and then deliver tactical missile strikes to their houses. Oh, that'll that would... down the human race, no problem. Exactly. It would it would take out all the problem causers. By the way, oh, fuck wow. hatred. I've been wanting to talk about hatred for a couple weeks now. Fuck that game. Just fuck yeah. that game forever. Yeah, it, if if you want a, a down low on what hatred is, basically you kill anybody and everybody when they're innocent. It's 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 overly gory. It's it's just it's just terrible. It's mean spirited. It's awful. There's no art. It's artless. It is an artless game. You know your game is going to attract some attention when people on the message boards are asking for kids and puppies to be killed in your game. It's, it's, it's artless. It is, it is terrible. If you buy that game, I don't want to speak with you anymore. I don't care who's listening. If you, if you buy Hatred, I don't want you in my life. You're someone I don't want to talk to because we are apparently people who play games for two different reasons. Even in an ironic sense. Like, you, you did it as a joke. No, you don't joke about killing innocent people. It's not fair. You don't do that. Especially with such gleeful contempt. I mean, you look at Postal, there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humor behind Postal, which is a terrible, terrible, violent game. But there's a bit of art to that because, again, it's very, very self-aware about it. You don't have to kill anybody. The game doesn't give you a, a, the, the uh, objective of killing people. It makes you do menial shit all around the house, and the game... <clears throat> sorry. The game is meant to be as annoying and as grating as crap, so that way you can just, if you want to, go postal, you know? It gives you that freedom. Right. It gives you that sense. But with hatred, it's all that is. So if you pick up hatred, think there's going to be something else besides that, I don't think you're going to be... I don't think you're going to be getting anything other than just pure malice and hatred and... Well, hey, there you go, name drop. It's, it's just bad-natured and poison to the game industry. This isn't what we need. When I hold up a game like Okami and a game like uh, Tengami and, you know, game, games that are full of art and meaningfulness and, you know, games that make me happy to be a gamer, and then shit like this goes on behind me, I get a little frustrated, you know? There's a reason to be frustrated. I mean, It look shouldn't at it. have to be like this. It shouldn't have to be like this. Why even make something like that and why people even... You know what I'm done talking about? Because the more I talk about it, the more I'm just going to get angry about it. Let me just end it like this, end the PSA segment. If we were to live in a world where stuff, like the stuff that happens in Danganronpa or Saw actually happened, we might have a few less assholes. I mean, it's terrible to say, but we'd have less assholes in the world. 
if there were more ramifications for death threats in our actions, then exactly. maybe we, then maybe we wouldn't be sending them out with such gusto. Ah, uh, yeah. Get rid of the anonymity. As soon as you kill anonymity, the place would be a not li- would be a lot nicer. Mm-hmm. And now for the final topic, what are you playing now? What am I playing? I'm playing a lot of shit right now, man. Yeah, you are. Right, right now I'm kind of bouncing around between a couple of Steam games. You know, I'm playing some Ro- <clears throat> I'm playing some Rogue Legacy. I'm playing some SimCity Four. Uh, Thief was the uh, was another PlayStation Plus game that came to the <laughs> PS3, and I know for a fact that's going to be terrible. So that way I don't get uh, a bad perception on the Thief series. I also picked up Thief Two for like a few cents on Steam, so I'm going to oh, play nice. that a bit too. So yeah, but I'm also playing Mario RPG, like I said, because it's one of my favorite games of all time. I'm playing Lords of the Fallen which is kind of like Dark Souls, but not as well polished. I mean, it's still it's still a good game. I can still see a lot of effort behind it, and I really appreciate that, but it, it would probably earn about a 6 or a 7 on my watch, because there's still a few things I don't like about it. Because Dark Souls was fair, Lords of the Fallen is just mean. There's, an, there's one enemy where... Uh, He's he's got this huge fucking spear. Does a lot of damage even with all my armor and all that shit. And uh, it takes me about five minutes to to bring him down to his health. And then he starts healing himself, full health. I can't touch him, and it happens every single time. So I had to go online and realize that once I go through the door, I turn left. There's an urn there. I have to break that, pick up the item, and now I can kill him. And it's just. That's that's just dumb. Dark Souls was at least a little bit clever in its cryptic nonsense. Like the rusted iron ring. I, I actually really enjoyed that. But it I'm seems also, but, like... That's a oh, real quick, I'm, I'm also playing Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, because why not? Yes! Play, playing Yakuza 4, and I'm loving that game to fucking death. I'm a huge fan of Japanese cinema, and I'm a guy who loves uh, good facial capture technology when it's emoted into the game very well. And Yakuza, the Yakuza series as a whole, I guess, does that incredibly well. And I'm really getting into it, and I'm really having fun, and I'm loving all the characters, and it's just great, 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 great video gaming. But uh, excellent. My the last two games were the games I got from Ohio Con, so why don't you go ahead and talk about what you're <laughs> playing in before I get to those. You, all all the games on your list, and I even know what those two games are. The the hilarious thing is, mine is a like a grab bag, but they're diametric opposites from your like action oriented games. And then you come over to mine, and I'm playing Minecraft, Bayonetta, Kid Icarus Uprising, and Majora's Mask. <laughs> those those are the main ones I've been working on. I'm almost done with Kid Icarus, and. Again, if you kind of have to cripple your hand a bit, but it is probably one of the funniest games I have played. There's just so much interaction between the different characters, and the script is amazing. It's also really rewarding to actually beat a level with the control scheme they give you. And Bayonetta, I've been keep finally keeping up with it so I can finally play 2 and actually beat that so I know what I've been missing. That's what I've been and, doing too. I forgot to mention. Yeah. Minecraft? So, recently, I kind of burnt out on everything. Like, mm. one day, I just I wanted to work on videos, and I came home, and I was like, nope, no, I'm not, I'm, I can't do it. So, I sat down, played some Minecraft. I think I played it for about seven hours one night, and it was a real stress reliever. So, I now understand why people play Minecraft. It really does help with stress. And Majora's Mask, you can't go wrong with it. I'm doing a lot better than I than when I was like seven. So I at least probably can because you're not like puzzles. seven anymore. Yeah, exactly. I'm I, I am a smart adult. I got it. Cool. And now for your stuff. <laughs> All right, I, I'm playing two different visual novels right now. Um, uh huh. Which should I start with the bad one first or the good one first? Yeah, I get the bad one out of the way. Trust me. Alright, it's a game called Harem Party. <laughs> and why did I pick it up? Because I eat this shit up like crazy. Mm. I, I love stupid, goofy, romantic, sexy comedies. They make me smile and they make me laugh. You Harem sound Party, so though. Convinced. <laughs> Harem Party is not bad. It, it's not 
bad. The thing you gotta realize about these porno uh, visual novel games, they're not all like Phoenix Drive. Okay? Thank Christ. They're not, they're, they're, they're not all like that. They're not, they're not just all about sex. There's actually a... Okay, this one's actually very... has a lot of sexual content, but the thing is, there's character development, and story, and, you know, a great setting behind all of that, in addition to the sex. The sex is, is just, you know, the icing on the cake of a wonderful story. And... It's just silly. It's just silly. Sometimes you need a bit of stupid in your life. Yeah, again, I'm playing Lords of the Fallen. Harem Party's balancing that out. <laughs> but the other one I'm playing is Steins Gate, which I've been reluct- I've been very reluctant to get into, because I know once I get into it, I'm just going to be absolutely blown away. Because I wrote oh, down... keep going. Uh, I've wrote down a few of the things that... Uh, um, that it did in the first hour of the game. Oh. It broke the fourth wall. It made okay. a C- It made a Seaman reference. What? There's been a, yep. Uh, there's been a total of three massive twists from the opening hour. There's been product placement. There was a Ghost <laughs> in the Shells reference. And there was an old, old, old-ass meme reference. And, and, and there's been there's also been uh, a Phoenix Wright reference. There's Jesus. been a lot of a lot of references. It's just an absolute delight to play. And the game hasn't even started for me yet. Holy shit. So I feel like if I keep going on with this, I'm gonna have my life ruined and it's gonna be nothing but <laughs> it's gonna be absolutely everything I do for the next few days. But I wanna get a few videos turned out first before I keep going with that. So yeah. No, just just <laughs> yeah. make it an enormous backlog so that when you you know, when you finally look away from your monitor after ten hours of playing Steins Gate, you can be like, Oh Lord, I need to put this together. Oh, that's Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, I've been actually very curious about Steins Gate and all, like, its predecessor and the one that came after it, which is Chaos Head and Robotics Notes. They're basically along the same vein as Steins Gate, but you don't hear people talking about Chaos Head or Robotics Notes. Everybody talks about Steins Gate. Yeah, everyone's just, like, this better be, like, the greatest damn thing I've ever played, and with the amount of twists they're giving me so far, I'm not going to be disappointed. Well, it's all about time travel, which is probably where all the craziness is going to come. There's also a, a crazy amount of dialogue and story as well. I mean, I think the writers really must have put themselves through hell to make everything tie together <laughs> so seamlessly. Oh, I can, I can only imagine. And uh, just a little plug for Steins Gate. There is an English PC version that you can get for like 30 bucks or 40 mm-hmm. however much you paid for it and they're also about 25 being... oh really yeah well there you go but also it is being ported to ps3 and vita in uh it with all the content of the pc version so go nuts so if you want to play steins gate it, there's many many ways to do so now Yes. And I'm I'm impressed so far. The more I play, the more I'm probably going to get rabid about it. So, uh, look forward to that. <laughs> Steins Gate is the Dark Souls of visual novels. Just, hey, just like how Honey Pop was the Dark Souls of dating sims. <laughs> I still love that everybody compares everything to Dark Souls. Because Dark so Souls weird. is such a comparable game. It's it's so oh, geez. amazing. Oh, jeez. Uh, you want to hit some Q&A before we sign off? That'd be good. We're about hitting the hour mark, I think. I, we, we've got some... Let's, let's get some qua. We've got some, uh, we've got some good ones, because if you remember the last time you nearly got killed by your wife, or your, your fiancé, whatever you call it. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, here's a really interesting one. What was your first M-rated game, and at what age? I was 17. Well, the the first one I bought or the first one I ever played? Just, uh... Because there's, cause there's three uh, stages to me playing M-rated games. The first, like, first, first, first M-rated game I ever played in my life would be Mortal Kombat. But the, but the one I actually rented from the store was Turok Dinosaur Hunter. And then after ooh. that, the first game that, that was actually given to me that I owned 
was True Crime Streets of L.A., the original Grand Theft Auto knockoff. But the first, 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 first game I actually bought by myself as a 17-year-old person on my birthday, I got two games. Two totally radically different games. First one, Naruto Class of Ninja Revolution... Uh, yeah, yeah. Naruto Class of Ninja 1 for the GameCube, because that was back when Naruto was still this new thing, and hey, maybe I'll give it a try. It's fucking stupid. And then the second game I got... Killer 7. <laughs> wow, do you still have Killer 7? No, and I regret that because I didn't understand it, but I guarantee if I were to pick it up again, it'll be a whole different ballgame. Oh, no kidding. I wish I Cause, had cause, Killer 7. Because now, now I love Suda 5-1. I love his shit now. I love his, uh, his vision. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. It's out there, man. Uh, now that I can understand as... a lot of the references and shit. Well, that too, yeah. When it comes to M-rated games, when I was growing up, my parents told me M-rating was bad, so I was a very good listener. And the first M-rated game I ever got was actually on my 13th birthday. My sister surprised me with Conker's Bad Fur Day. And uh, forever my life was changed because I was actually afraid to play it for fear that my parents would come in and see me, like, blowing up a bee or, you know... Uh, getting sliced in half. If I had a kid, that would be an M-rated game I would let them play, because that's an M-rated game in a silly kind of way. Yeah. It's not, it's not it, like... it's. I mean, it's the difference between that and Mortal Kombat, know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you're not ripping out spines, you're just bouncing on giant boobs that belong to a flower. That, yes. It's silly, it's goofy. Kids are going to see that and giggle, because it's silly. <laughs> it's so yeah. silly British humor, it is! Oh, look at all oh. the shit! I was also really scared of zombies around that time, and when I got to the spooky <laughs> chapter, I just I just couldn't. But anyway, the first one I actually went out and bought, again, for my 17th birthday, uh, went out and bought Fable of the Lost Chapters and Oblivion, the Game of the Year edition. Mm. Or yes, not Game yes. of the Year. It was just a regular. But a very good choice on my part, I thought. Can't go wrong with either of those. No, no. Got one with plenty of DLC, and I got Oblivion, one of the best RPGs out there. Yes, yes. Before Skyrim came out. And now people look at Oblivion and laugh. Well, actually, I still think Oblivion's pretty good. I haven't played much of Skyrim. I need to get on that. Oh, you do, man. I mean, you you loved Oblivion, right? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Skyrim is... a trillion times better, and I'm so sad that it's 2015, and I have to tell you this. I know. I remember its release date, because they made it memorable. Triple 11. 11, 11, 11. Yeah. The, probably one of the one of the gl most glorious game uh, days for gamers that day. Especially with all the glitches and everything. I'm so sad they fixed the tiger glitch. Oh, wow. Alright, next question. All right. This one I kind of don't understand. When was the last time you guys kicked yourselves for not liking something you posted after watching it? I think he's asking if there was any video we uploaded that we regretted, because it wasn't up to our standard of quality. In which case, mm. the, my entire Wario Land Let's Play. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was going to say the entirety of Ride to Hell, but that was actually a fun ride. Um, I'm I'm the one who should regret that. <laughs> well, yeah, you played it. I'm sorry for that. Uh, actually, all the all the naughty games we played, Me Melia Wars, the guy game, <laughs> all those terrible games. Hmm. Let's let's do yeah. some more. Uh, no, at, yeah. at the time, you know, it's funny when you do it at the time, and then you look back and you go. Oh my god. Why? I actually went back and looked at the rating for a guy game. It's 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 forming a pretty nice looking lightsaber. It's not uh it's not doing too well because apparently people wanted nudity and not us jackholes talking over the game. Well, they should go buy the game themselves or they should go onto Google and type naked ladies. You're going to find a lot of them. Do, do you know what I actually still get to this day? I posted it four years ago, and I'm still getting question or I'm still getting requests for the download link to Phoenix Drive. 
people want to play it? The, they like I think one guy said I really want to jack off to this. Can I please get the download link? We're not doing these videos anymore. Oh lord, did you not did did you not see those drawings? This is pretty much what happened. You did a very good representation of what happens, especially My like drawings are sexier than what actually happens. Oh no. Ugh. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Next question. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. What games that you, uh, the games that you don't like but everybody else does, and then that question, vice versa. So, what do you like that everybody else hates? What do I like that everybody else hates? Um, probably a lot of these, uh, Japanese games, like, yeah. Well, well Harem Party for one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can ever adequately offend that, but, you know, games like uh, Asura's Wrath and the Phoenix Wright Professor Layton crossover, um, you know, games like that. Well, that's not exactly things they hate, it's just ones they're not interested in. Oh, oh, I got one. Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, I hate that one. I People can, give that tell. game such a bad rap, and I, I like it. It's fun. I had fun with it. I had more fun with that than Sonic 06, that's for damn sure. There were some issues, but, you know... I didn't take the game that seriously. I had fun with it. The soundtrack was great. A lot of the actions were cool. I mean, a lot of the weapons were fucking cool, too. I mean, I had fun. I've got one. What do you, what do you like that everybody else hates? Well, actually, I'm going to go with uh, what I don't like, but everybody else does. I fucking hate the Wii Sonic games. Besides <laughs> Sonic Colors. Secret Rings and Black Knight, they can go fuck off. I hate Secret Rings so much. Well, do you know what game that I hate that everybody else loves that's probably going to lose a lot of followers from us? No, what you got? I really don't like the Fallout series. Oh, no. Really, really, really don't like Fallout. I tried Fallout 3. I beat Fallout 3. I played it from start to finish. And the more I played it, the more I hated it. I started out the game just loving it, because you could walk around as a baby, that was cool, but... As I, as I went on, it just... All of it was it was painful. Especially when I got to the fucking... When I got to Paradise Falls, or whatever the place was with the, with the kids in, in cages or whatever, once I got there, I said, fuck this game, and everything about it, because it was just all bullshit. I think it has to do with the color and the fact that it wasn't Oblivion. And it's the fact that, you know, all, all, everything about it was just terrible. You know, I've been leveling up, you know, the big guns and small guns because I figured the bit, the most, the thing that would benefit me the most is if I upgraded my guns, which it fucking didn't. I still miss, like, direct shots that should have hit. It's fucking bullshit. But apparently, to save these two kids for a, for a vital mission, I had to either... Um, oh, I remember this. I, 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 had, I had to either bribe somebody or I had to undo this thing, or I had to undo that thing. And my speech craft was crap, my science was, wasn't, wasn't high enough, and the, the other thing wasn't high enough either, my, uh, my crafting or whatever, whatever it was. All of that was out, so, I mean, the, the other thing I could do is I could shoot up the entire place and take everybody out, but my guns weren't that good to take everybody out with for some stupid reason, because apparently whenever I hit anybody, everybody starts shooting all their shit on me. It's And I always get diced up every single time. It seems like that I was never strong enough to deal with the threat that was in front of me with any kind of ease. And I was... I had like a, like 50 levels and big guns and, sh and big guns and small guns and shit like that. I was, I was a beast when it came to that shit. And then the only thing I had to do was I finally just had to... I had to saddle up and I spent like all of my caps, all of my money to save these two kids for this worthless fucking thing and only to b go back to a society that was ungrateful for what I did. You know, just it was a it was a, a society of children who told me fuck you before I left. And whenever a character says fuck you to me and I can't do anything about it, that's not good. And so it just feels like that nothing I did fucking mattered. It was a terrible, horrible gaming experience, and I've realized that I've gone on a long time talking about it. Yeah, you did. I have a lot of bile for that game. Uh, yeah, I know you do. You seem to have a lot of bile for a lot of games that a lot of people like. 
just because it hurt you in a way. Like, where did the bad game touch you? Well, a lot of places. I mean, and... I like games. I, I mean, don't take it as me, me hating games that everybody loves. I mean, I like Gears of War. I just don't think it's very interesting, but I have no problem with it. I have no problem with Call of Duty. I have no problem with, uh, you know, all those other popular mainstream games. They're just not my cup of tea, you know, most of the time. But just Fallout 3 in particular hurt me. It hurt me, and I hate it for it. Here's a good one to end on. When is there going to be more Dead Rising? <laughs> we just recorded I'm an episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you know how agonizing it is to play that game? For, like, Too hard. Playing it? No, the, like, playing the game itself isn't bad. It's actually, the thing that kills me the most is the scheduling, and when things don't work out as what I've researched. It's probably what gets me the worst, and also the god-awful AI. That has killed me more than anything. But those multiple takes that you see... I still think you're a... Uh, I still think you're a damn madman for taking on this project. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I thought it was going to be fun. I mean, what, what are we at? The next one that's going to be posted is episode 13. We're almost done with the game. Good. And I, I can't believe it has taken this long. It shouldn't have, but it did. But every time you see the after stuff, like after the episode, you see those extra things, those are m- multiple, multiple takes of trying to get everything done in one go. And then if I die or something like that, no, I, I got to go back like 30 minutes, do it all again. So it does take a long time. I think this, this last one we recorded, it took me about two hours to record everything, about another hour to piece it together so that we could talk over it. So it does take a long time. It's finding time in my own personal schedule. It's finding time in the game's schedule to do everything correctly. And it's a big nightmare, but it's a lot of fun to do, if that makes any sense. Again, you're a damn madman. And I love it. I just... It, it's sad to say, but I can't wait to see it be done. Just to say, I let's play Dead Rising, and I did a damn good job of it. At least in my opinion. Yeah, it was that one weird guy who kept making sexual jokes. Uh, aside from that, it was a pretty good let's play. Oh, g- oh good. At least they like me and not you. <laughs> Oh, wait, that was me more, sometimes, uh, too. <laughs> we got any more quick questions to go by, or... I think that's uh, it. Actually, none. Hmm. All right, then. So now we'll just await more. Yes, give us more questions, because I'm feeling better, and we got a scheduled thing going on, so hopefully we can churn out more, I mean, produce more Orange Peripheral episodes for you. <laughs> yep, uh, three, three a week. Uh, they're only going to be 20 minutes now. That'll add up to an hour. And, uh, yeah, oh, never mind. <laughs> actually, it's going to be, actually, we're, we're, we're going to take this recording and chop it up into five-minute bits. <laughs> Release Monday through Friday, and we'll have, like, three mid-roll ads going in, oh, you know. Th- th- thank you. I was, I was about to say, a five-minute video, seven mid-roll ads. Unskippable. <laughs> How many people are, gonna, are we going to be able to keep 30 seconds like long, you know. There's more ad <laughs> than content. Oh, God. And you know, you know, each video cuts off with us talking halfway through it. So, uh, like two days later, you'll be able to hear what I was saying before it cut off. And to put a period on that, that's the state of mainstream gaming for you. <laughs>